What up, players? It is War Boss Tay back up in this mug. Welcome to part two of my How to Paint Tiburos the Red Wake, the special character for the Carcaradon's Space Marine chapter for the Warhammer 40,000 Miniatures Tabletop War Game. So here's where we're going to be at the end of this video. As you can see, we cleaned up the highlights, we gave him some scratches, and uh, just generally we're looking to pop out the details since we added the washes at the end of our last video. We're bringing back up the highlights to contrast with the shading. The most important color is Mechanicus Standard Gray, followed by Retributor Armor, Rune Fang, or, Rune Fang Steel or Stormhost Silver. I also use Verdigree by Game Color Effects and Off-White by Vallejo, but you can substitute those for Games Workshop colors, either uh, Sotek Green for the Verdigree or Pallid Witch Flesh for the Off-White. I've got Abaddon Black and uh, also Non Oil, then Eshin Grey, Rackarth Flesh, and Administratum Grey, Thon Stone, and is that it? I believe that is it. So yeah, here we are at the end of this video. And I hope you stick through it, or uh, <laughs> at least like have me playing on in the background while you work on your own miniatures. So let's get going. At the end of our last video, we were here. The washes have dried, our guy looks uh, pretty dark, so the first thing we're going to do is re-highlight the flat areas, the largest surface areas with Mechanicus Standard Gray. The reason we start by reapplying the base color is because now we've got the shade kind of giving us an idea of where the shadows naturally are going to be. We don't want the shadows to be on the widest areas, the part that the light is actually going to hit. So we're going to contrast those lighter areas by painting the base color back up. I'm going to start with an easy part. I don't want to go too uh, crazy with it yet, so I'm starting with the feet. These boots have uh, two areas that are kind of divided by the uh, line in the armor. So it's, it's a really good chance for us as painters to play with the idea of that contrast of the shadow and the lighter tones. As you can see, I only put the paint on the uh, bottom half of the brush, the, the top part where the bristles are, rather. You don't want your paint to uh, get you don't want to dip your paintbrush into the paint pot, of course, but also when you're using like a wet palette, like I'm trying to do, you don't want to put the entire length of the bristles into the paint. If paint dries where the bristles meet the metal ferrule part, then um, it's going to be really bad. You're going to have a hard time cleaning that out unless you get a really good brush cleaner to dissolve the paint. And uh, that's how brushes fray, that's how brush tips fray. So if you're a newer painter out there, that's my number one tip. Do not dip your entire brush into the paint. I used to do that when I first started and uh, I was painting my night goblins and I would dip my entire brush all the way down to like the halfway down the metal of the ferrule and it, uh, I, I ruined a lot of good brushes like that. So what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to paint around the studs but I want to leave a little bit of that darker shadow area in uh, like the area immediately surrounding those gold studs because like I said we want that contrast between the lighter area and the shading. So I'm going to be doing that with both of the leg armor pieces and again we're starting with the toe of the boot. I'm sorry for the blur. I, I tried to set my um, camera so that it will focus a little bit clearer and uh, if I'm working on the model like I am now then um, I'm not looking into the viewfinder and uh, some of you might remember my my faithful manservant Igor he's uh, he's been missing I, I don't know where him or Lewis or Commissar Bane my uh, usual rogues gallery of assistants are there they're gone they didn't even leave a note they just left It might show up in a future video. In fact, I'm probably sure they will, but for now, I'm, I'm behind the camera all by myself. Um, so going back to what I'm actually doing, uh, I decided to also start on the fingers of the gauntlet. 
and uh, when you're painting anything with lots of armor plates, segmented armor plates like uh, this Terminator, then, gosh, I'm really sorry about the blur, you guys. I think I wanted in the future try to keep the model, keeping the model closer to the center of the camera will alleviate that. But uh, yeah, I definitely apologize for when I don't look into the viewfinder. I'm not actively checking to see if I'm in frame and in focus all the time. Uh, when you have lots of segmented armor pieces and they kind of layer on top of each other, like you see his fingers are in his uh, two gloves there, then that's a really great way to practice that highlighting and the contrasting depth. Tibros is an interesting model because he's got so many gold studs on his armor. His two leg armor pieces, his shoulder pad right here, even his head, the forehead of his Terminator armor has those gold pieces on it. But um, what I've decided was I want to try to really bump up the highlights so that you can see the highlights and we can do some really fine edge highlighting to pop those colors out. So what I've decided to do is uh, focus those brighter edge highlights on that little crest on his head right behind the gold studs as well as the uh, kind of head armor above his helmet, the little, I guess, dome-shaped armor looking piece. So when you find areas that you really want to pop out, then you're going to pay a little bit more attention to those, which uh, we're going to be doing when we get onto our Dawnstone and our Administratum Gray. You can see it a little bit, a little bit better from this angle that I'm, I'm focusing on where the light is going to hit and then I'm brushing it out to the edges. So the light is going to really hit down the side of the gloves there. Um, down the back here of his torso armor and along the edges anywhere where there are edges that's the part I really want to hit first because those are the part that, the parts of the armor that the light would naturally hit And if you make a mistake, like you see, I'm trying to leave the shadows in the grating on the back of, back panel there. If I got a little bit of that paint into the uh, lines of that panel and it really messes up those shadows, all you really need to do is go back with your non oil. I think a lot of, not mistakes, but a lot of the uh, misconception with painting, if you're a new painter, is that you can't go back. You can always go back one step fix what you just did if, if you have a little bit of an overpaint and uh, come on back and uh, clean it up with your with your highlight or whatever the next paint step is. So he's looking pretty good with our Mechanicus Standard Grey. We're getting a really good finish for uh, this first part, I'm just bringing the colors back. And uh, as you can see, I'm not hitting all of the armor areas. I, I am leaving some of those Mechanica Standard Grey with the non oil uh, a little bit darker and shaded. And that's ju just so that we can have that contrast of tone. We're moving on to our Retributor armor now. As I mentioned in our last video, this is a fantastic gold color. It is this bright yellow, almost like jewelry color, and it works really, really well when you're painting a piece that has uh, gilded gold edges like Tibros here. And there's lots of different kinds of shades of gold. You've got your brassy gold, you've got your reddish gold, but for a y nice bright yellow gold it's hard to beat Retributor armor. So I'm touching up these metal studs. I think I got a little bit of Mechanica Standard Grey on some of them and um, because we had that known oil wash over the entire model in the last video it's good to go over the the brighter areas you can see that the, the known oil in the shadows of the banding on the shoulders and we want to keep that line that dark line is going to be really really good for us when we are actually adding the top highlight which is going to be storm host silver and um I apologize. I think what I was doing was going back to the Mechanica Standard Grey. At certain points in this video, I start kind of jumping back and forth between colors, like just taking a half a step back because I see something that I want to fix in the moment. You don't have to do this. Like you can 
in fact, you're, you're probably going to be uh, wanting to not do this as much because it can really slow down your progress if you're, especially if you're trying to speed paint or get a model painted to just a tabletop standard and not do too much fancy, fancy brushwork with it. You want to just go uh, a complete step at a time and then fix everything, um, you know, in chunks and segments. Stormhole Silver, this is the final highlight that I was talking about. This bright silver highlight is going to be perfect for recreating like a, a glint of light off of the gold. You can also use Auric Armor Gold, which is the brightest gold color that Games Workshop has right now. And it kind of also simulates that, that light reflecting off of uh, the yellow gold with a little bit of silver in the color. But I thought just going straight silver with Stormhole Silver will allow me to really define where the light is glinting off the armor pieces. You're, you're going to want to find the edges that are closest to the light. Like you can see with the shoulder edging and banding, I, I didn't line the entire edge of the shoulder armor or like the knees here. At the knees, I'm just picking up the, the edge that would glint and reflect the light. I want to say that maybe 80% gold, 20% silver for all of your gold areas is going to create a great illusion. You don't want to go too much or else it's just going to look like uh, you, you tried to paint something gold and there's a little, or, or silver rather, and there's a little bit of gold underneath. The fantastic thing also about Stormhost Silver is you can go right in and highlight your silver bits, which are the uh, teeth on the chain fists, the uh, amazing harpoon lightning claws as well. And for all of these, all I'm doing is just brushing it along the edges and picking out the highlights as if the light were glinting off of the very uh, edges of the power claws. Yeah, I'm going to have some words with Igor once he gets back because this blurriness is uh, terrible. Maybe just like put, put me on audio right now and don't even look at the screen or else you know, you might mess up your eyes. This is terrible. i, I got to get a new camera. Uh, if you want to support my studio, get me a new camera. <laughs> All my links to my Patreon page are in the description. All right. Um... So that's all the silver done. I decided to stay with the silver coils leading to his backpack. I figured they're just, you know, they're that's what the um, the pictures look like on Forge World. And I'm really just gonna try to keep this guy as close to factory presets as I can. I think this is the point where I decided to move on to highlighting the skulls. Some of you might want to keep the dark skulls like that when you have a watered down known oil and you give your skulls a wash or your bones a wash it creates this beautiful like aged dark grim looking shadowed bones uh, color and you don't have to go back up I, i've decided to pick the color back up just because i want that contrast i want the brightness to uh, of the skulls to really be picked out against the gray of the armor and so uh, it, it was really important for me to you know, pick out the, the face, the detail, the teeth, the cheekbones. When you're looking at a skull, a skull is a great way to practice your highlighting because you really see where the light is going to pick up, uh, pick up off of the bone. And uh, the forehead, the, the center of the head going back, the, the sw sloping, I guess, uh, swoop of the skull from front to back, the cheekbones, the nose, the face, uh, the teeth, and the jaw. Like, everything is really, really sculpted on a skull to allow you to practice your highlighting. Next I'm going to be using off-white to paint the mask. Now this is a very very uh, strong step forward in highlighting the white of the mask. You don't have to go immediately to this. You might want to build up from the shaded uh, administratum gray, maybe doing another administratum gray, but I figured I'm just going to go all the way up to off-white and then uh, what I'm going to do later is take my known oil and water that down and repaint the, um, I guess, the, the, the gills of his mask because those ended up a little bit too bright. I made the mistake here at the beginning of thinking that I could just 
paint the uh, edges like a highlight. And I think what I decided at the end was that it was just a little bit too much work and I was getting the paint everywhere so I just decided to paint the entire thing in this off-white color. The only area that I'm really going to be leaving the shadows is where the eye lenses are. But these gills on the side of the mask, they uh, are going to get filled with paint and then uh, re um, redone, have those lines deepened one more time with known oil in a little bit. But as I, as I said, I think the painter, uh, my, my self five years ago would have looked at this and thought no it's too bright this white is too too bright you want the model to be like dark and grim and gritty but what i've uh, come to notice as i've changed my painting style over the years is that it's really important to pick out the face the head it, it's a focal point of the model so uh, i decided to go a little bit overboard because look how bright that looks now before that administratum gray was kind of barely peeking out, but now that, that mask is so bright, and um, when we let it dry for a little bit and put that non oil back, it, it doesn't bring it down too much, and it really maintains that, that, um, that vivid white colorization. So now, like I said earlier, we're gonna take our Dawnstone and we're gonna start bumping up these edge highlighting pieces. For any Space Marine armor, any kind of armor with hard edges, any kind of really um, strong metallic armor surface, we're going to be painting this onto the edges, not the entire piece. In fact, you don't even want to feather the highlights out to the edges. You want to just really line the edges to create the uh, outline of the armor pieces. So I'm going to trace the edges here of the, the helmet mount. In the torso armor, I'm going to trace the top of the little crest above his uh, gold mounts on his helmet. And I'm really just tracing lines to show where one armor piece ends and where the light is glinting off of it. So the edge of his belt here, all of the, um, uh, the frame of his leg armor. With the gauntlets, it's really important to paint along the sides. There is a natural line. If you hold your model up to the light, you'll see it when you're looking at the model's gauntlets. You can pick out the, the lines of where the light is hitting that model on the side, right by the, uh, the fist, the casing of the, the power fist. So here I'm tracing that line where uh, that light would naturally pick up. And when you do it, uh, like I'm doing, I'm kind of feathering it along that line, then you really create the illusion of it being like a nice soft reflection. If you have too much paint on your brush, that's, it's a really sure way to mess up your edge highlighting. I'm actually looking at my uh, finished model now after I, I filmed this and I'm amazed at how much uh, a couple simple more steps are going to get us further along right now. But uh, this is really not not that much work. Edge highlighting your models it really bumps it up the level from a what I would consider like a new painter or a beginning painter to one who's more experienced with uh, the the highlighting and different techniques. So you definitely don't if you want just a tabletop standard. Space Marine, you could just re-highlight up the base colors. You don't have to go fancy with the edge highlighting, but it just really bumps it up so much. And I would much rather have someone look at my model and see that I put this extra time and care and effort into it. And uh, I, I think that's what makes me happy as a gamer. My models are always gonna look like individual and unique, and I think yours sh should too. So you find these little tricks, right, like the edge highlighting, the uh, different weathering effects I'm going to show you in a bit, and they will make your model stand out. Just the fact that he's on a piece of cork, and he's kind of straddling this cork like a coral reef at the bottom of the ocean, I think is really individual. We're going to create a, a mixture now of Eschen Gray and Abaddon Black. So whatever um, I paint or whatever paint I put on the palette 
that is eschen gray, I'm going to use maybe like two thirds that amount in black, Abaddon black. So it's a really dark, dark gray. It's not completely black, but it's definitely darker gray than uh, Mechanicus. You want it to look darker than the uh, majority of the armor plates. And remember, we're not going to paint this over too much of the model. The right shoulder pad here is going to get the treatment as well as the, I believe it was the hip, hip armor pieces. Now this is funny because for my, uh, for my Carcharodons, I would actually paint the leg armor in this darker gray, but because of the gold studs, we uh, don't want to create too much of that, uh, that darker gray look um, because it's going to take away from the overall Mechanica standard gray color tone that I'm setting. And you've got the uh, skulls hanging over the, the crotch piece, the, the gauntlets are kind of angled out to the side, so you, you're not really going to get a lot of Mechanica standard gray coloring unless you see it in the leg armor, which is what I did. So now what I'm going to start doing is, I believe it's this point, at this point in the video that I start doing the um, the weathering and the chipping and uh, I, I hate that my camera went out of focus for this section because I want to kind of explain to you what I'm doing as it's happening and uh, you can see I'm kind of waiting for it to reset so there are two ways that I'm going to create the chipping effect on my model the first is I'm going to start with the darker co uh, colors and I'm going to just create slashes across the model. And this is to indicate like, um, you know, if you got hit with a, a, a bladed or a piece of shrapnel or like a bladed weapon and it took a, took a chunk out of the armor. This is not like a, a bullet or like a bolter would hit the armor and explode. There's no uh, explosion marks or scorch marks. These are just uh, gashes in the armor. And uh, the way that I can do this is either by starting with the slashes or going to Administratum Gray and starting with the brighter highlight. I've done both and uh, I'm going to show you both techniques so that you can see for yourself which one you like. With the Administratum Gray, what I'm doing is I'm plotting out where I'm going to put the dark chipping effects. So I'm looking at where I put my Dawnstone. Remember Dawnstone was our edge highlight? and I'm going to just kind of put splotches. You don't want to be too even because these are going to be uh, random kind of chipping effects on the edges of our armor. So I'm looking for pieces that are like the hard edges that would normally get a lot of wear and tear, that would normally scuff if, if it gets caught on anything. Maybe not necessarily the center of any armor plates, but the edges, especially edges that meet other points and um, edges like the bottom of his leg armor where the, the, uh, the boot slides into. And uh, up here at the top where if he's striding forward or if he gets caught in like a storm of something, then the, the, the debris and the dirt and the rocks would, would hit and chip away at the, the edges of his armor. And remember, like I said, the lighter gray will uh, also pop and give your eyes something to look at. So maybe I'm not gonna uh, put the chipping on all of those, all of these lightened areas, but they are gonna help to define the outline of our miniature. So for this, I like to think random, splotchy, uh, just not uniform. So it's within this administratum gray random splotchy design that I'm going to be painting my combo color of the Eschen gray and the Abaddon black. For the edges of the armor plate, I want to paint it within the administratum gray so that uh, you see both colors. 
And what you're doing is you're creating the illusion that the uh, the dark paint is paint that got chipped and scraped and torn and rubbed off. And around it is the brighter edge that administratum gray is like the outline of the armor that got ripped up or pulled up or is catching the light. So you see the contrast between the dark of the, um, the bare metal or the bare ceramite as well as the, um, the brighter outline of the armor that got torn at the edges. So it's a very, very simple technique. You, do, you start with the light and then you add the chipping underneath. You might remember I, in like two steps ago, we've got those dark scrapes that are the, uh, uh, the, the tears, the rips into the armor, and that's only this color. So we're gonna be, that's the uh, second way of doing chipping that I'm gonna be showing you next. But for right now, we're just looking for those splotchy administratum gray painted areas and we're just painting within those. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take Dawnstone now and I'm going to do an edge highlight of the tears in the armor. Let's call them slashes. They're more like slashes. Like you got into a duel or uh, something with somebody with a sword or a bladed weapon and they ripped out these chunks of his armor. Just nice diagonal, vertical, horizontal slashes. The important thing when you're painting this uh, chipping effect is you want a, your brush to have a really good tip on it. That means you can't have any dried paint in the ferrule. You, you've got to take good care of your brushes. You want to use a smaller brush with a smaller sized, uh, I guess, tip. And you want it to be uh, nice and fine so that you can really just trace it. You don't want a big, thick line of paint for your chipping. In fact, the less the less you can really see that slash, the better, because then your eye will not get, uh, your your eye, your brain rather, will not tell your eye like that there is no real chipping, that it's just an optical illusion. I think it's more interesting when your brain is fooled into thinking that you actually went in there with an X-Acto knife and you tore into pieces of your armor. Something that I did as a beginning hobbyist, by the way, and I do not recommend that because uh, if you ever decide to repaint your models, then, you know, those little chunks are very, very obvious. But for this, is just an optical illusion of slashes in the armor, chipping, that uh, is a really, really great way of showing off your skill as a painter. So again, I'm just lining the underside. I think I, I might have forgotten to mention that when you're doing these uh, very cartoony cuts in your armor, these slashes, you paint on the black stripe first and then you paint the uh, lighter stripe underneath it. You could also do it the other way around where you paint the light stripe of Dawnstone first and then you paint the dark Eschen Gray Abaddon Black over it. Um, I, I found that painting the dark area first will allow me to really see where I want the highlight to go. And you're really just going to be going back and forth between those two paints, the lighter and the dark, because uh, sometimes the light stripe might be too bright, and sometimes the dark uh, slash will be too, uh, too thick and too dark. So you're just going back and forth. You want to balance uh, how even they are. And you'll be able to tell when you're looking at your model, Hold the model away from you and look and see, like, does it really look like a, uh, a cut in the armor or does it look like it's just painted on stripes? At this point, I'm going to water down some known oil and I'm only going to paint it under uh, where the gills are for his mask. I want to re uh, reshade those lines in there, but I don't want to go in individually and try to paint each one. So I'm just taking down some watered down known oil, letting them seep into the recesses and create this natural 
looking um, pattern in the mask. When you water down your known oil, it'll help with the drying effect, that, that uh, uh, oily, oily pool that I, I really don't care for. And it'll allow you to have a little bit more working room with it. All right, we're nearing the end now. The, now that those chipping effects are in place, I'm gonna be uh, working on the verdigree. I'm using actual verdigree from game effects, and it came with a really good set of uh, other effects paints like blood and rust and um, stuff like that. But if you don't have a verdigree specific paint like I think uh, Nihilak Oxide is Games Workshop's alternative. You can also just take Sotek Green from Games Workshop and just water it down, water that sucker down. It's going to be a little bit more blue than this verdigris paint, and I think Nihilak Oxide also is is more of a like a minty green. It's like a bright whitish green, and it's going to dry really uh, cloudy. And so basically, what I'm doing is I'm I'm going into the uh, edges and the lines where, where the metal folds and I'm only going to be painting it on the gold. I don't want to uh, cover the gold pieces. There are some uh, some painters that just cover the entire gold areas with this oxidized effect, this verdigris effect. I don't really want to do that. I want to still see that bright shiny gold. I just want it to look like this armor is uh, so ancient that it's got this natural accumulation of verdigris over the over the years, over the decades. But they still polish that sucker up whenever he's in port or whenever he's uh, getting his repairs done. All right, it looks pretty good. Next, we're just gonna be re-highlighting the areas on the chest. I'm gonna be flipping the model upside down, turning it sideways, doing all sorts of stuff because um, you wanna get the right angle and uh, you don't wanna get this bright yellow paint on any of the gray areas of the chest. So, uh, Avalon Sunset is for the lightning bolt. I think it was corn red for the red ring, and then just Rackarth Flesh again for the skull in the center. One of the weathering effects I did not do, which I, I completely forgot when I was putting this video back together, was I didn't film any of the uh, dust effects, which is basically taking Steel Legion Drab, watering it down, uh, you know, with two, three times the amount of water till it's almost just like a, a cloudy brown water rather than paint and then lining it up in the grooves of the armor to show like an accumulation of dust over time. I didn't do that but uh, I'll start my next video with it. Right now I just wanted to focus on re-highlighting uh, verdigree and chipping effects. So there you go, he looks really good. I'm really pleased with where he is. The final part of the video is gonna be uh, adding on, like I said, that dust effect as well as doing the markings. He's gonna get a, a little shark fin tattoo over the eye and a shark fin insignia on his shoulder pad. There's not much room on the armor for any other details, but we'll get those done and I'll show you how I do that in the next video. Thank you so much for watching and please drop a comment down below before you go and we'll see you in the next video. Latest players!